good morning everyone everyone and we welcome you to this week radio webinar today we have a very special webinar and together with our friend and partner ross from cashline solutions we will be talking about accounts receivables management in the oil field service industry given the cost of new capital no business can afford to let the existing capital go to waste however some businesses don't realize how much cash is trapped in their own balance sheets Freeing up that cash by optimizing their working capital delivers more than improved operational efficiency. So today we will be sharing opinions on ways of decreasing DSO for oil field service companies and achieving best possible cash flow by implementing electronic tickets and invoicing uh, in timely and effective payment and collection process. And our speakers today are Ross Guthrie with VP Business Development in Cashline Solutions and Nikolai Karniuk. VP of Business Development in Rigor, and myself, of course, my name is Dasha, I'm Marketing Director here in Rigor. And now before we start, uh, real quick about today's agenda. So you'll hear a short intro of Rigor and Cashline Solutions for the service industry. We'll talk about key factors of DSO optimization and uh, field ticket to payment process. Then we'll discuss typical financial situation findings of OFS companies and improving financial metrics, and finally show the correlation of improved time to invoice and improved time to pay. And at the end, we'll have a Q&A session where you will be able to ask any questions if you have any. So let's get started. And I want to pass mic to Nikolai. Hello, Nikolai. Thank you, Dasha, for the intros. And indeed, uh, welcome everyone to our webinar or rather a new season of webinars. And we're gonna be doing it every other week at least uh, in this new 2022-23 20, uh, season. And looking forward to uh, hosting more of you guys. So thanks for again for the quick introduction. So uh, speaking of rigor in the cash line. So we have uh, met some time ago with Ross and his team. And what we have found through our interaction is that we're good partners for the oil field services industry. And as part of our interaction and working with some of the clients that we've realized that we align on uh, the main mission. So, and our mission generally as a partnership uh, can state that we are an operational and financial performance optimization driven organizations uh, with focus on digitalization and cash flow management. And I think the two things like digitalization and cash flow management are very important. And that's what we're gonna dive a little bit um, deeper on today. Some of the things that I wanted to point out how we do things uh, as far as the digitalization can make sure that we're a little more specific and precise on what we're talking about. So we have a series of both of cash line and rigor has software uh, systems in place to help our clients. Uh, in our case, uh, I'll touch a little bit on how we help with uh, cash flow management uh, on the operational side and Russ will dive more into the financial details of how we can help our clients. But generally speaking, we help manage assets on uh, both the hardware assets when it come, when we talk about rigor and then you know financial assets when we talk about the cash line. So we just cover all the bases for our clients. We also provide uh, software as a solution platforms to help our clients to manage things as they evolve in their organizations. And we do help with integrations for other systems as well, because it's important to understand that we operate in an ecosystem and for any business to run, you have to have a series of different integrations so that information will flow from one system to another. So let me uh, then continue and uh, focus on the things that we as Rieger partner in this partnership that we work with the oil companies focus on. So as a solution, again, a quick overview, uh, Rieger, we position Rieger's and Operations Management ERP, not a financial uh, an important point um, to, to keep in mind, but more in operations management. So we enable the operations team, the team that goes out and actually to generate revenue. And then it's important for them to have the right tool in place. And that's what Rigor does. So we have different functional areas in the system from purchasing to price management and sales activities, to field services uh, through the field tickets, to the assets management and rental asset management specifically, uh, and then on to the inventory when it comes to parts and consumables and the financial aspects of direct expenses is effectively managed in rigor as well. So basically, it's from quote to invoice system. Uh, an important thing again to mention is that this is where the partnership come into play as a key one that we help to generate invoices in rigor. And then we pass the baton, so to speak, for, proverbially to the accounting team. 
uh, and that's where the collaboration happens in organization and that's where we see the big bang for a buck where everybody plays a role in the organization so what i would like to a little bit expand on uh, when it comes to the uh, optimization of the operational activities the dso and the financial aspect of it specifically is the dso optimization and uh, a couple of things that I'm going to talk a little bit about on is the key factors. And then I will explain how we help all full service and rental companies to manage their activities from ticket to invoice. And we'll touch on the payment. But an important part, again, this is where the partnership comes into play. The payment side and the financials will be more elaborated on by Ross. So, so what is a DSO? And uh, if you have been in the business for a while, you basically understand that DSO is something that is uh, basically a formula. So you have accounts receivables, you have the net sales, and you have days. There are three components to it. What we found through our interaction with our clients that the key, and you would probably agree with that, but the key groups of people or functional areas that play a role in that, sales, operations, and accounting. Uh, sales does generate quotes and make sure that uh, you get to talk to the clients. Operations delivers the services. Um, and then uh, accounting is the group that actually, um, I would compare it to the goalie. So they're sitting and actually making sure that uh, they catch everything and then they output it in a form of invoice. And then the next step for them is just to do the collection uh, and manage the cash flow effectively. So when we look about the DSO and the cycle, so this image generally explains what happens as far as the cash flow management is concerned in the operation cycle of an oil field service company. So you get a client request and you start dispatching uh, services or the equipment as part of the service delivery. And then you start, uh, and then you complete the service and then you start invoicing uh, based on the information you would have been receiving from your field group uh, as far as what's been delivered for the services, making sure that also the um, billable items are linked with the correct prices. There's a few challenges right there already that can impact uh, the potential delay for invoicing. And then once you get the invoice out, you make sure that uh, you you uh, work with your uh, uh, EMP company or with your client uh, per se, and then you um, make sure that they receive information timely and correctly, and then you can receive the money timely and correctly. So there's a few steps that um, enable um, sort of, or provide an opportunity for unfortunate opportunities for gaps. Uh, there can be a, an incorrect invoice, an incorrect price, uh, an incorrect service description. Uh, you know, human factors an important one. So erroneous uh, entries uh, or manual entries also impact uh, the correctness of the information and the timeliness of payment. So all of that we've uh, we've been dealing with through digitalization efforts, so that there would be less uh, sort of less chances, if you will, uh, to, to create an error. So and how we break down the process uh, is then we, we allow in rigor specifically to manage everything digitally in one system from pricing, uh, where we have the price module and you can uh, manage all your general prices in it for, di for different line items. Uh, then you can start creating a job uh, and you don't have to use another system. It's going to happen in the same system. Then you, through the delivery or uh, field uh, service tickets, you generate a document that is tying the price and the job, and then you get a ticket right there in the same system. So all of a sudden, the, the cycle and the uh, ability to, uh, to face errors uh, is minimized already. Then you wait until the completion of the services. Uh, and then after that, you have to receive an approval. So an important step between the return or the finish of the job in the field and getting a billing approval uh, is an important step. What we've seen quite often, uh, and I will point out to it in a second, what happens is the delay in when you deliver the services and then you get an approval. There is a first biggest gap that provides um, a chance for a missed opportunity to, to get uh, paid correctly. So then once the approval is done, you get to the invoice. That's another thing if you have a lot of manual handover and then uh, the payment may happen. So when we'll look at the ticket to invoice process, uh, typically in a paper-based environment. So we see that the, uh, the job is ended, for example, and then somebody has to physically get a paper ticket and return it to the office. So this is the first gap that can uh, impact and will impact and does impact 
the time rest of payment. So then uh, there may be multiple different things that happen in between. So there may be physical rights uh, in hours and hundreds of kilometers between the different sites collecting the signatures and getting back to the office. So once you have the approval, then you have to then uh, get it back to the uh, person in the office, uh, in the client's office as well. So there's multiple steps um, in the paper-based processes that impact the timeliness of the invoice generation and uh, payment receipt. What we've done in rigor and observed it is that when we start using more of a digital process, so we can, through the digital uh, tickets, start generating return tickets and formalizing the completion of the work right there on site, and then enable the collection of the signature and by that getting a building approval right there on site. If the person is available, such as a company man, to get this signature, if even if they are not available, so there is a way to get the digital signature to them electronic to through in email. Again, it all depends on the setup of your organization, but we've seen an enhanced timeline, so to speak, or shorter timeline, when you get the approval and there is not much of a handover, physical handover of documents from one person to another one. And then once you get the invoice uh, correct uh, first time, then you get payment faster. And we've seen the difference between the two. So one other important aspect that I wanted to highlight when we talk about the ticket to invoice process in rigor is that depending on the setup of an organization, there can be different ways in which you can collect a signature. And there are ways to do a scratch on. There are ways to actually take a picture of a paper ticket if organization such as your client is not supporting digital, fully digital um, process. So you can then um, take a picture of a paper ticket and actually submit it through the uh, screen and uh, upload an attachment functionality. You can also uh, use a well, secure digital signature provision services such as Pandadoc or DocuSign, where you would receive, uh, where your client would receive an email, and even their IP address can be tracked and captured through the digital signature process. Um, and another way to make it even simpler is that to have a web portal enabled, where nobody needs to even send anything if they don't need to. They can your client will log into the web portal, see all the outstanding tickets, uh, and then either to either dispute them if there are any errors very quickly or even sign them digitally through the portal. So having all of it in one place. So there are multiple ways on how you can uh, using a system like Rigor Digital Field Ticket System um, to optimize and expedite the process of collecting signature, generating your invoice and doing it correctly at first go, and then uh, submitting it for payment and receiving payment and do it faster. So that is a general overview of what and how Rigor helps uh, to the oil field companies. Uh, so what I wanted to do now is to pass the mic to our uh, guest and uh, partner, Oros Guthrie, who's going to focus on the financials. And he will talk about the financial situation and their findings in the OFS industries. We'll touch on the metrics and also talk about the correlation between the time to invoice and time to pay. Welcome, Rose and uh, Mike, and floor is yours. Yeah, thank you very much. I, it's a great segue. Um, you know, uh, to speak to the industry, you know, what what Cashline is seeing, um, as everybody's probably well aware, there, there are a lot of, uh, there's a lot of M&A, there's a lot of uh, growth industries picking up. So the focus on cash flow and receivables management uh, is becoming, um, you know, very important to these companies as they take on, you know, larger portfolios as they merge or acquire and, and uh, just the organic growth uh, because the industry has picked up, you know. And so we're seeing a, a lot of focus on receivables management, cash flow. And one of, one of the, this, this um, slide kind of organizes the thoughts of the order to cash process because as Nikolai pointed out, the, you know, the, getting the invoice to the customer is, is step one, although a large step uh, with a lot of hurdles that, that they are managing. And once that happens, um, you know, like he's alluded to, you know, cash lines focus is creating the cash flow from that invoice. A lot goes into the order to cash process that I think organizations need to to manage as a whole uh, this, this puzzle, if you will. 
uh, if you look at order to cash, um, one of the one of the issues that gets overlooked and is extremely critical to uh, an orderly order to cash process is having the cash applied as timely as possible. Um, all the efficiencies that Nikolai alluded to on the field ticketing and all the efficiencies that that you will try to, to implement in the collections process will be completely negated if cash isn't applied timely. You know, the, the orange piece of the puzzle is Nikolai's world. So in rigorous world, you know, field ticketing and invoicing uh, is critical. You know, the old adage that, I, you know, we use sometimes haste makes waste, uh, but time is money. So the quicker that we can get from end of job to invoice, the better, uh, although accuracy is everything. Um, and um, having the price book and rigor and having data uh, generating your, your ultimate generating your invoice from the field ticket um, is going to increase that efficiency, uh, but it's also going to increase the accuracy. And kind of flipping on the other side of the puzzle, dispute resolution is one of the things that, that over the years I have brought to the forefront to manage. And when I say dispute, you know, it, it can be job quality or, or product quality or, or such, but a lot of the disputes and the barriers to getting paid are, are mostly related to poor invoicing. Uh, you know, it, it, your customers can become upset because the invoice is late and it, and it, um, it uh, disturbs their, their PO and, and the, the funding and everything else that they had arranged for that work. So the quicker the invoice gets to them, uh, there's actually an appreciation for the fact that you're, you're helping them manage their financial you know, business better. But it also has to be correct. And so managing those invoices that do get through uh, in an orderly fashion, managing them and working through your organization to coach counsel and improve those processes is really important. It leads to ultimately that lower DSO that Nikolai alluded to. Um, E-commerce is a big piece of our business in the oil and gas industry. Most of our clients are running 80 to 85% of their invoices through some type of e-commerce arrangement. Um, and we all know that the data that goes through that process is very specific for that particular customer. And it has to go correct, it has, um, and you have to meet their expectations on that. So managing that piece of it uh, is going to be critical to your cash flow. And of course, there's always the credit collections piece of the world. I mean, collections is kind of a, a holistic a, a statement around the, the whole process. Um, that communicating with the customers, your relationship with your customers, your, your knowledge of who in that organization to contact is, is, uh, is very important. And, that's one of the focuses that Cashline has is we, with our client base, uh, we're collecting from over 800 different companies. We know individuals within those companies that we can call and, and perfect that payment and work through some of the issues that we've just talked about. Maybe the e-commerce arrangement isn't working. We know, we know who to contact to, to uh, clarify those requirements. And um, we'll work with our, our clients, with their organizations, uh, operationally accounting uh, to help resolve disputes. Same thing with field ticketing. You know, we, we can't, you can't force the collection effort through a fine net if the cash isn't applied. The last thing you want to do is call, call the customer and ask for a payment when you already have it and you just haven't applied it. Uh, not, not, not a good um, way to build a relationship with that, with that customer. So a point with this slide is that each one of these pieces, the order to cash uh, has to be attended to uh, for everything to work well together, for everything uh, to, for you to get the ultimate cash flow from your receivables. Uh, there has to be a broader focus than just, uh, just collections or maybe just the credit review and the validation of, of um, your customer's ability to pay. Uh, every one of these pieces of the puzzle have to work well together. I think next yes, and one thing I just wanted to add is that it's a it's a good concept that it's a cash puzzle. And I think the cash line team is good at solving puzzles uh, and again, bringing all the different pieces of it together. And I think uh, what I wanted just to move to the next slide, Ross, and 
on that note, I wanted to ask you a question. So how do you, what are your findings? How do you find, how are you guys are different and through the words of your client? And then uh, what are your findings, I think, in when you deal with this puzzle, uh, generally, uh, yeah. when you interact with the customers? Absolutely. So, you know, what Cashline is focused on uh, is, is making, is, is each piece of that puzzle. We want to focus on the, the, the whole uh, opportunity to create cash flow. And what we find is that um, typically organizations have siloed those different pieces of that effort. Um, cash application, obviously, everybody feels like there's a separation of duty that has to happen from everything else. And uh, systems will prove that different. Now, you can still be SOX compliant and still have cash application uh, report down through the, you know, uh, the organization, whereas they, they, the, or who, the cash application group can understand the significance of, of getting it applied so collect, the collections department can do their piece. Uh, E-commerce is typically becomes an IT uh, issue because it is very uh, you know, technical, but yet uh, we find that um, our knowledge of what's required in, you know, for e-commerce to work smoothly uh, is not a knowledge that gets spread throughout the organization. So our, our, the difference in cash line and most uh, approaches would be that we're going to look at every piece of the puzzle to make sure that um, our client is, is uh, optimizing each piece uh, in order uh, for what we ultimately want to do is manage the collections and the credit. But we realize that everything else has to work well for us to do our job well. So we're going to partner with companies like Rigor who can we can see an opportunity to bring in for field ticketing solution. Uh, we have cash application solutions. We manage the dispute resolution through our software um, and all the connections we have for e-commerce are, are going, you know, going to be a benefit to our clients. And of course our collectors and our collection effort and credit uh, reviews are there. So uh, what makes us different is we're, we're gonna look at every piece of the puzzle to improve cash flow and not just the collections effort. And one other, um, a good question I think that I had in mind uh, that might be able to help, uh, I guess guys also better understand how you guys work. So you mentioned a key word here that is known to every organization, uh, silos. So how do you break them down or do you have to break them down forcefully or is it a gentle, um, a gentle interaction that kind of helps us. So can you just elaborate a little bit on that? Well, I, you know, I think um, I believe that uh, the right tools are necessary for every job that everybody in your organization is, is having to perform. Uh, manual cash application, for example, is, is a nightmare. Uh, automated cash application, um, we see most of our clients and most of my experience you have an 85, 90% match rate, hit rate, and can apply cash uh, automatically through the right tool. So um, what we wanna do is come into the organization and say, we, we have this knowledge or we have these tools. Your organization needs to benefit from these things. Uh, we're here to help. We're here to help you know, whoever has to apply cash, whoever's dealing with e-commerce issues, the disputes. The, we want to provide a solution that makes everybody's job easier, more efficient, uh, and the companies, uh, you know, more financially stable through uh, efficient cash flow. Um, so, I, you know, we, you, you do have to uh, break down the barriers, so to speak, but we try to do that by saying, we have a solution that will help you. Um, or if, in some cases, if it's working great, don't broke what's you know don't fix what's not broke. Leave it alone. Let it do its thing. But if uh, we see an opportunity, uh, we try to we try to basically you know uh, be seen as uh, as uh, helpful, <laughs> uh, and we're there to, to for the company to benefit from that. Everybody to benefit from that. All the yeah, way down to the employee that's doing the work. Right. And I think one of the important things is that once you bring everything together, you get the data and data maybe even be that magic tool that helps you to get the barriers down because then become transparent. So information gets uh, shared uh, and then through the set of different you know, permissions are 
with an organization when you have a system in place so nobody's kind of hoarding the data or protecting it or overly protecting it for one or another reason. So opening it up to everybody in organization from senior management to middle management uh, so it allows you to share that information with everybody in, in not a too forceful of a way, but more of a too collaborative. We're creating collaboration, I guess, because everybody's on the same page, making sure that we're generating, we're making money. We're we're not only here for the sake of doing activities, but it's all about the money in the end. So focus on financials right. is critical. That's right. Absolutely. So, so and let's just then go ahead and uh, talk about a little bit about the benefits of process improvement and how what, what are your findings and the key metrics as well. Yeah. So this this is a. a you know, probably just a different rendition of one of the slides that you presented earlier. Um, and, but just from a simplistic point of view, uh, and we, we talked about DSO a lot, and you, you explained, and, and DSO is the accepted, generally accepted counting practice number that everybody knows in, in the financial organizations of the companies. Um, what we like to do is break down DSO a little differently. Uh, DSO, the calculation, uh, there's a multitude of ways to do it, but DSO uh, will be uh, skewed by revenue. The, the, sweat, the ups and downs of revenue will, will change the DSO when it really had nothing to do with how well you were collecting or how well you were invoicing. Um, and so we break down for our clients uh, we will look at the field ticketing and we want to know how long it takes to get a ticket uh, to invoice. But we will also look at days to pay from the, from the time that the invoice hits the books to the time we can put the money in the bank and clear that invoice. How long is that? Because that calculation is not skewed by revenue at all. It's simply an indicator of how well your processes can collect that invoice. Now, back to your comment, Nikolai, about data helping change an organization. In the collection process, if we accumulate dispute data and we start to categorize that data and we see invoicing problems because the, the amount's wrong. We see invoicing problems because it's going to the wrong address. We see uh, maybe job quality disputes that aren't being resolved fast enough, et cetera, and so on. We'll categorize those, those issues and then go back to the organization with opportunities to improve their order to cash process. So when you break it down by each piece, then you can kind of assign accountability to the areas that need to refocus, to rethink perhaps processes and procedures, and, and most likely the actual tools that they're using to get the job done. What I've seen, it's not uncommon for uh, from time to complete the, the ticket or the invoice, the, the, the combination of the two, it can be 20 days. It, you know, just in my example here, let's just say it is 20 days. And then let's say it takes 60 days to get it paid. So now you've got the equivalent of a DSO of 80 days. Uh, industry average in the service side of oil and gas is around 77 days. Um, so you might look at it and go, well, I'm, you know, I'm right at average. But if you look at optimizing the process and you put in tools, um, a tool like rigor, and you get it, down, you get your process down to one day. And I'm, I'm, I'm putting some gray area in here for, for the different types of businesses that are out there. Uh, so maybe it's three days. And, uh, and I think uh, Nikolai and everybody on the rigor side would go, wow, it shouldn't be three days. It should be one day. And it, and it very well can be on to the, you know, the collection piece of it. Our average DSO for our, our average days to pay for our client base is 47 days. Um, so if we took that number and we said, okay, now we're down to a 50 day uh, DSO, that's a 30 day improvement opportunity. Now, now the bigger question is how can you present that to management and say all of this effort uh, you know, bringing in a rigor, bringing in a cash line, or, or looking at our processes, and we're going to to have all of these initiatives to to change. How do you present it to management to where they can see the value of this effort? Um, and if there's anything that 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 it has to be done for management is if we're going to spend time, effort, money, there has to be a return. There has to be value in that effort. 
And so I think if you, Nikolai, if you click the, the, there we go. So this little square kind of, that 30 day improvement is about a 54,000, 55,000 per day cash flow improvement. So that's $1.6 million of cash flow improvement from an effort that would go from 80 days to 50 days. Now, obviously, that's a one time cash flow infusion, but maintaining these new good habits, so to speak, with an optimal process are going to continue to, to turn that cash and, and keep your, D, your DSO at an optimal level. And so, one of the things I like to, to make sure is present it to management as a value add. Nobody, no company is going to spend time, effort, money on anything that's not going to add value to the company. Value here, you know, it's pretty blatant. So I can help you put $1.6 million in the bank if we do this is what you're telling your management. But at the same time, how much, uh, how much customer goodwill are you buying by getting them an invoice faster that's more accurate, that saves them time, that makes their life easier? How much good is there in goodwill with, you know, working through uh, with the payables group or the finance group, if you will, when that invoice doesn't come through perfect and there is a follow-up needed and you resolve that dispute faster and you work through things, it makes everybody's life easier. And so there's a lot of goodwill that you can't put a dollar value on that you'll gain from this process. Um, the way I look at this from the, from the better fill ticket, better invoicing to the better collections process, it's nothing more than you know, a, a customer-driven, centric approach to creating your cash flow. Taking care of your customers in this fashion on the finance side, just like you would in providing a quality product or a product, product, a quality service. I totally agree. And I think this is a good description of how you can prove the value because it's not just uh, and the focus has to be on the cash. And then when you can show, and, and I think the call out is there to, to our participants is that if you guys want to have uh, some help to actually present the information to your management to see how much uh, of a return you can get uh, through the better cash flow, uh, Ross and his team is definitely available uh, to make sure that you can Absolutely. get this information because sometimes it takes time to put it all together. And based on your numbers, uh, for the days and the number of the tickets, the value of the tickets, so that can be put together. And uh, one thing that I wanted to um, to point out when we talk about uh, the cash line, and we had a chat with Ross before, is that um, how many how many clients? On, um, what what do clients say in a sense that when you get uh, when you get uh, a new client on board, and then uh, they're starting getting the benefits of it? Um, have you ever What's the, what's the retention on your client uh, base, uh, Russ? Yeah, you know, we've, um, you know, our clients are, <clears throat> they, uh, most of our clients come to us because they're, they're simply looking to improve cash flow. Um, and then we get into the discussion that we just had about improving the, the order of the cash process and not just the collection effort. Our software that, that we have presents uh, a, a, just about every statistical analysis there is available uh, on the receivables. And that, that all of that data is available in a dashboard fashion to our clients. So they, they, all, they suddenly have more information on receivables than, than they probably ever had. They have uh, the ability to um, allow the algorithms in the, in, the, in the software to predict cash flow, which most of them have never had. Proof is in the numbers. And um, you know we have a good uh, baseline when we start with the client. And they can see daily in the, the dashboard the improvement uh, and the information on you know cash flow, days to pay, uh, disputes that we're beginning to recognize, how long those disputes take to resolve, uh, more data than most of them uh, have ever had. And, and the beauty of that is they're not having to try to crunch some data through Excel and, and they just it's it's available daily in the dashboard. Um, our team is driving the collection effort and the dispute resolution effort and everything else that we can find in process improvement. But we use the data that we get to go back to management and go, you might want to look at this. this there's an opportunity here. We've got enough data to support, again, 
what there's there's a value add if you if you look at this issue. So our our clients are 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 given the information they need to change uh, the process. Uh, at the same time, uh, we believe wholeheartedly in first things first. Uh, work on the collection effort uh, to get cash flow as much as you can, and let that effort uh, bring to the surface the opportunities there are uh, to make process change. So they get addicted. I would say that uh, they get addicted to get more data, to have that partnership right there from day one. And I don't believe that they have uh, any intent to kind of move away simply because the more you use it, uh, the more you benefit from it, the better cash flow, the healthier the business is. Yes, absolutely. All right. So thank you very much again. And uh, let me just move on. It's been in my mind, it's been very, um, very insightful. Again, we try to keep it short. Uh, and this is this new format that we're implementing in this new season of our webinars. And on this point, I wanted to uh, open the floor for any questions uh, to the to you guys that, that are with us. And if you don't have any immediate questions, um, we try to kind of work as much as possible in a short period of time. Here's the contact information for both Rigor and Cashline. Feel free to reach out. You know what we look like. We know what we sound like. And you know how to contact us. So the only thing that is now between you and a better cash flow uh, is just a phone dial. So dial up and ask us questions directly. And we'll be more than happy to help you, both Team Rigger and uh, Team Cashline. And I don't believe there's any questions, Dasha, correct? No, no questions. So if there's anything else you wanted to add, Ross, at the end before we wrap up, just kind of here's a, here's a, here's an opportunity. No, I, I just uh, I appreciate the opportunity to 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 um, participate in this webinar with you guys and the partnership that we have, and and uh, I look forward to you know helping uh, anybody that uh, has has watched today. Uh, please reach out to me, give me a call, um, and love to hear from you. So. Before we before we take part, I think we have a question. Is that correct? Yeah, uh, yeah, we got a question now. So the question is: Are these two systems separate or integrated? So the two systems right now they're just doing dependent software packages. But since we're cloud based, uh, we can make sure the information falls from one to another. Okay, so here's another question: uh, How can you reduce invoice errors that result from? incomplete information coming back from the field teams. What does the audit trail look like in rigor? So when we talk about rigor, uh, is, it, is, it is a valid question when not, not all the information can be uh, received by people. So one of the things that we enable in the system when we set up, there may be mandatory fields. So if somebody who is expected to deliver, to collect information and pass it through the field ticket, uh, is it is a mandatory, so they won't be able to submit it back to the office until it's uh, collected and then submitted. Okay, perfect. And I do have addition to the first question. Uh, so then you have to pay for each separately. Is that right? That is correct. Yes. So each company, so this is Rigor and Cashline provide different services. They are uh, and can be system-wise integrated, but these are two different uh, services that will make sure that you're saving more than you spend that I just wanted to add. Um, yeah, yeah, so, and the next one is, would both system replace QuickBooks? So let me, uh, uh, so I'll, on the QuickBooks side of the things, I wanted to tell you that Rigor is not an accounting system. We do not replace any accounting software, which you need by law to run your PL balance sheet or the cash flow if that system enables. So the three core uh, financial reports that you have to generate, you need to be using the uh, accounting system or software. And and for any organization that is an important part. Uh, anything to add on this one? No, I, I would echo exactly what you said. Um, you know, the software that we use is, is um not designed to replace uh, an accounting system, but we can definitely interface, uh, you know, with with any accounting system. Yeah, yeah, because accounting system has its own purpose, and it's been uh, <laughs> it's it's not necessarily proprietary. It's just more for the uh, accounting uh, reporting, right? But what both rigor and cash line processes and systems allow you to optimize your operational activities to make sure that 
you are bang on your cash flow and you're bang on on uh, the correct data capture from the field back to the office on the operation side as well. All right. Okay, thank you. Those are great you. questions, thank you. Yes, so I guess that's all. No more questions for now. And like I said, uh, you see the contact details for any more in-depth questions or a demo of any of the two systems or both of them. Feel free to reach out and we can schedule that either in person or over Zoom. And we'll be more than happy to see and talk to you guys. Right on. Well, thank you again on that note. Uh, I wish everybody a great day and uh, stay tuned. We'll be in touch uh, in the next webinar in about a week or so.